The LCD on my Wii U gamepad mysteriously broke and none of my kids are owning up to it. In this video, I'll show you how to fix it, then give it a DIY ability score. The package from eBay arrived, took about 4 weeks to deliver, and that means I've got all the parts I need, the replacement LCD and touch panel, some basic tools, and a step-by-step -step guide from the internet. I think we're set, let's get our hands DIYT. Time to unbox the package. This pack has two parts. The first one is the LCD screen. And the second item is the touch panel. To begin, remove all these plastic screw cover using a thin blade or a paper cutter. Just don't lose any of them so you can put them back later for a neat finish. In my case, I just stick it next to the hole. Next, you need to grab your number zero Phillips head screwdriver. Make sure you're using the correct size because if you don't, you might accidentally round off the edges of the screw head. Disconnect the battery terminal, then pull it out of the gamepad and set it aside. Then grab your Y1 tri-point screwdriver and remove all 10 screws as shown in this photo. It's also good if the screwdriver is magnetized so you can easily pull out the screw when it's loose. Grab the bottom half of the gamepad, then gently lift the back of the outer case to reveal the motherboard. The outer case is attached to the motherboard with a wire to the rumble motor. Unplug the connector from the motherboard using your fingers or a pair of tweezers. Once it's free, you can set the back cover aside. Next, disconnect the left and the right speaker wires, but in this video, you'll see me disconnect the right speaker wire later. Then, disconnect the Bluetooth flex cable by opening the top and bottom clasps. Both clasps open away from the flex cable. You can either use a small tweezer or even a small flat head screwdriver to do this. Using your fingers, carefully lift and remove the Bluetooth logic board. It's still connected to the motherboard with these black and white wires, so make sure you don't pull it out too hard. Then use a pair of tweezers to unplug these two wires from the Bluetooth logic board. Disconnect the right controller analog connector. Then disconnect the right controller blue flex cable by opening the clasp away from the flex cable. Once it's in the open position, slide it out from the clasp. Again, using either a small flat head screwdriver or a tweezer, open the clasp that connects the main LCD ribbon cable to the motherboard. Once in the open position, slide out the ribbon cable away from the clasp. The next two steps are probably one of the most delicate. These two ribbon cables, apart from being really tiny, their clasp open the other way, unlike how the other clasp opened so far. So instead of opening it away from the ribbon cable, it actually opens towards it. Next, unplug these two connectors with the black and red wires. Then using your fingers, carefully lift and remove the NFC communicator logic board. You can leave the wire plugged into the logic board while you set it aside. Then, disconnect the left controller blue flex cable by opening the clasp away from the flex cable. Then, disconnect the left controller analog cable. My camera stopped recording here, but go ahead and remove the four screws in the location pointed out by these arrows. You will need the number zero Phillips head screwdriver for this. Once removed, Carefully lift the motherboard and set it aside. You should now see the display case fully exposed. At this point in the process, I actually took a photo how each of the wires are mounted on the frame so I can put it back almost exactly the way it was. 
Using the number zero Phillips head screwdriver, remove the four screws located at each corner of the display case. Slowly unravel the wires mounted on the display case, then gently lift the case out and set it aside. At this point, there's nothing holding the display securely in the console, so you should be able to push it up with your fingers from the bottom to free it from the case. This is where the instruction from the internet ends. Based on what I can see, I will need to pry this black plastic trim in front and this foam insulation from the display so I can reuse it for the new one I just bought. Insert the paper cutter or a thin blade in between the black plastic trim and the touch panel. Then carefully slide it down to detach the double-sided tape from the touch panel. And if you ruin the adhesive of the double-sided tape during this process, you can replace it later with a new one. And in this case, that's just what I did. Luckily, the adhesive on this double-sided tape is not super sticky, so I was able to detach all of them from the plastic trim and replace it with a fresh one. Next, we need to detach this black foam insulation from the old display. Using a similar approach as before, insert a paper cutter between the foam and the display, then gently pry out one of the corners. Once there's enough foam peeled off, use your fingers to gently peel the rest away. Make sure to be careful as you peel the foam near the square cutout so you don't rip the foam. For your reference, this is the side by side comparison of the old and the new LCD screen. And if you notice, there aren't any visible damage that I can see here. If your new LCD screen has smudges like this one, now is a good time to give it a good clean with an alcohol wipe. Then dry it off with a good quality microfiber cloth. As you can see in this video, I made a mistake of using an ordinary tissue paper to dry off the alcohol wipe. And in the process, it left a strand of fiber onto the LCD screen, which I didn't realize until I finished putting everything back together. So I'm actually stuck with this mistake forever, or until my kids break the LCD again, who knows. If you are reusing your old touch panel, make sure you've installed it with a fresh double-sided tape if the old one is not adhesive anymore. But in my case, I got myself a new touch panel as well, so all I need to do is peel off the plastic backing because it comes installed with a double-sided tape around the edges. If you want to align your touch panel and LCD as perfect as possible, you can lay down the touch panel with the double-sided tape facing up, not down, on the LCD screen. In this way, you can familiarize yourself how closely you have to align the edges of the LCD and the touch panel before you commit sticking it together. Also, don't stress too much if it's not perfect. There's actually a utility within the Wii U settings to calibrate the touch panel later. Next, get the insulation foam from the old LCD screen we removed earlier and stick it to the back of the new LCD screen. I didn't show this step, but you need to put double-sided tape on the sticky side of the foam to make sure it stays in place and it doesn't peel off from the LCD screen after installation. Align the foam insulation to the back of the LCD screen and make sure there's no overhang around the edges. Once you're happy with the alignment, press the foam onto the back of the LCD screen and get rid of any visible crease as much as possible. At this point, it's a good idea to do a quick connectivity test to make sure both new parts are functioning okay. And to do that, get the motherboard and attach the battery, the main LCD cable, the two small touch panel ribbon cables, this blue flex cable, and these connectors with the red and black wires. Then flip over the gamepad and check if the LCD projects anything. In this case, even though it shows up as an error, I'm happy with this result. It's time to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. My camera stopped recording again at this point, but the next step is to put the black plastic surround trim onto the gamepad facing down on the table like this. And the plastic trim should already have double-sided tape. Then carefully lay down the LCD display. 
The black plastic trim should stick to the LCD display exactly where it should to cover the gaps. Start putting back any controls or buttons that have come loose during the installation. Attach the gray display case onto the back of the LCD screen, then carefully fish the gold ribbon cable onto the slot on top. Make sure all cables are clear on all sides, then firmly press the case for a secure fit. If you took a photo of the back of the display before removing the case earlier, now is a good time to look at it to serve as a guide how to route the wires properly. Secure the display case to the back of the LCD screen with four screws and tighten using the number zero Phillips head screwdriver. Take time to make sure the black and white wires connecting the Bluetooth module are routed properly so it doesn't get pinned down by the main logic board once it's underneath. Next, install the main logic board on top of the display case, then fish out the two gold ribbon cables onto the slot in the middle. Once the board is snug, use four screws to fasten it to the display case. Reattach the NFC communicator logic board by lining it up and pressing it down gently onto the motherboard. Plug in the connector with the red and black wire to the terminal near the base of the NFC communicator logic board. Then do the same for this other connector with the red and black wire as shown here. Using a pair of tweezers, grab the left controller analog plug and line it up with the corresponding connector on the main board. Once they're aligned, just push it in to connect. Next step is to connect the left controller blue flex cable. Make sure that the clasp is in the open position, then carefully slide in the flex cable. Once in place, close the clasp by gently pushing it towards the flex cable. Connect the first of the two small gold ribbon cables. This clasp is very delicate and easy to break, so be careful and take your time doing this. Use a small tweezer to push the ribbon cable in, then press the clasps away from the cable to close it. Then do the same process for the second small gold ribbon cable. It also helps if you place a finger behind the clasp so it stays open while you position the ribbon cable. Next, connect the big gold ribbon cable of the LCD screen by lining it up with the connector, then close the clasp by pushing it towards the ribbon cable. Then, plug in the last of the connector with the red and white wire. We are almost at the finish here, guys. We just need to make sure the wires are routed correctly so they don't get pinched in between the motherboard and the case. You can refer to this picture here as a guide. This is the photo of the console right after I removed the back case. Using a pair of tweezers, grab the right controller analog plug and line it up with the corresponding connector on the main board. Once they're aligned, just push it in to connect. Next, connect the right controller blue flex cable. Make sure the clasp is in the open position, then carefully slide the flex cable in. Once in place, close the clasp by gently pushing it towards the flex cable. Then, reconnect the Bluetooth flex cable. Start by opening the top and bottom clasp. Line it up with the connector, then close the clasp by gently pressing them towards the cable. Next, plug in the black and white wire that connects to the Bluetooth logic board. Carefully align the connector to the pin, then gently press on it. Do the same process for the other connector. If you're holding the Bluetooth logic board this way, the white wire goes on top while the black one goes at the bottom. Once both wires are securely fastened, reattach the Bluetooth logic board back to the main board. The connector is located at the bottom part of the logic board. Line this up with the corresponding terminal on the main board, then gently press on it. This is the part when I realized this red and black wire is out of place. Although I fixed the problem, I didn't do it correctly. The wire actually needs to route over the NFC communicator logic board as shown in this picture right here. It's now time to close the gamepad. Make sure all switches located on the top section of the gamepad are all connected. Then grab the case, 
line it up with the top section, then connect the rumble motor wire into the main board. Once connected, align the case to the gamepad and snap it in place. Next, grab your tri-wing screwdriver and fasten the back of the case using the 10 screws. Then connect the battery to the terminal and install the battery cover using the number 0 Phillips head screwdriver. And finally, attach the screw hole plastic cover to give it a neat finish. And we are done! Overall, I'm very happy with the outcome of this little project. You can see the plastic surround trim sits neatly around the edges there. Unfortunately, I introduced a contaminant between the LCD and the touch panel which I need to live with. But the good thing is that it's not visible when the screen is turned on. The final step before using the gamepad is to calibrate the touch panel. The calibration process learns the position of the touch panel in reference to the LCD screen and makes the necessary system adjustments. So I'm just going to start the settings, system settings app. And we're going to use this control to navigate through the calibrate touch screen option and pick that. I've got the stylus here and I'm going to initiate the touch um, screen calibration. So I'm just going to make sure that my stylus lines up with the point. Sure this is all lined up. Um, there we go. And it's complete. And press OK. Touch screen has been calibrated. And that's it. And now I'm going to give this project a DIY ability score. This is the part where I rate the work I've done by judging it across five categories. Each category gets a weighted score between 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest and 10 being the highest. So a maximum score any of my DIY project can get is 50. Starting with affordability, an LCD and touch panel for Wii U and eBay will set you back around 45 Australian dollars, while a replacement Wii U gamepad will set you back around 200. So based on that price spread, this project gets an affordability score of 10 out of 10. Moving on to the quality category, I'm happy with the overall quality of the LCD screen and touch panel. They both work perfectly. The only gripe I have is that even though I bought both parts together as a package, it would have been nice if it comes pre-attached. So I'm giving this a score of 9 out of 10 in the quality category. I'm very satisfied with the output of this project. I was pleasantly surprised how easy and straightforward the disassembly process was and that I can continue playing Wii U games again. The other thing I'm looking forward to is to be able to install Homebrew on, the, on this Wii U. So I'm giving this project a 10 out of 10 in the satisfaction category. The fit and finish would have received a perfect score as well, but I accidentally introduced an imperfection between the LCD and the touch panel. And since the imperfection is not visible when the screen is on, I'm taking one point off. So I'm giving it a 9 out of 10 in this category. And finally, fun factor. I enjoy doing this project a lot. It only took me a couple of hours from start to finish. Highly recommended for anyone in this situation to do this DIY project. All you need is a sense of adventure and uh, $40 to spare. There's really nothing to lose, so I'm giving this project a 10 out of 10. And that gives this DIY project a DIY ability score of 47.75, which puts it on top of any DIY project I've done to date. Thank you for watching. That's everything I have for you in this video. If you find this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up. And finally, please consider subscribing to this channel and hit that notification icon so you don't miss any of my future updates.